Hey guys, Hi, it's Matt Bowd, I'm checking in again. Uh, I've been having quite a lot of questions coming back, um, such as, uh, is there such thing as overtraining? Personally, I don't believe there's such thing as overtraining because let's look at it from a different perspective. Can you eat too much protein? Can you not eat enough protein? Okay, <clears throat> not eating enough protein, how do we get our bodies to take in more protein? We eat more of it, okay? We might not be taking it all when we eat all that protein, but our body soon does adapt. As it starts to adapt, it starts to make more receptors and we start pulling in more of that protein that's crucial when we're anabolic to getting that growth, that regeneration and that recovery, okay? Now it's the same when it comes to training as well. I mean, there's so many different opinions out there, okay, from, for example, we're gonna train lightweight, we're gonna train heavyweight, we're gonna do sets, we're gonna do reps, okay, but then, when we look at a lot of people go for the weight, a lot of people go for lightweight, a lot of people say, yeah, I'm going to have two days off, I'm going to have three days off, I'm going to train six days a week, or oh, what the hell, fuck it, I'm going to train two, two, two weeks, you know, non-stop, okay? Um, but what you're going to find is that your body will start to learn, it starts to adapt, you know, and that's when you have to start improvising and overcoming this, all right, that, that adaption, and then what you do then, is you start to throw in new principles, start throwing in new little key things that are going to keep your body on its toes. You're going to keep that shock process coming in nice and deep. You're going to keep it really having to work hard to get that recovery, get that regeneration. So me personally, I mean, people have been asking me, do I train two days and then day off and then another two days day off? Or do I train six days straight or five days straight? Well, personally, I go with the feel, I go with the flow. I go with what feels right because if I feel that I'm able and uncapable, then what the hell? You know, I, I tend to do two different variations where for a period of time I'll train consistently every single day and then I could be training 10 days straight, then I take two days off. When I take that two days off, I make sure I relax, I alter my diet and adjust that to suit. Um, and then I find that any more than two days, then I start to, to feel a bit sloppy, as if I've gone a bit too far, and uh, it's hard to get back into it a little bit, uh, as if the muscle doesn't quite wake up. Um, it's that sort of mind-muscle connection when I come back. Um, but then, that's I feel sufficient enough time for my nervous system to sort of recover and, and deal with you know all the trauma over the, the last 10 days. Um, so I can do that consistently, but I've been doing this for quite a long time, and it works for me but then another aspect sometimes what i'll do uh, at different periods in the year around competitions and stuff is train splits so i could train first thing in the morning uh, for example it may be doing cardio in the morning um, nice and early um, and then it'll be allowed for a few hours after a few meals get in sort of late morning do another do a weight session and kill that on one body part and then i'll allow enough meals through the day um, enough recovery through the day lots of rest as well and then i'll get to the late evening and then i'll go and throw in another weighted session then um and it, it, it works well it varies between the two um they, they both work well i get a good stimulation from it but i I, I know my body when i get to a point i feel like i can't go any longer and i need to mix it up so i take a few days off and i decide right what the hell i'm gonna go on to splits now so then i throw in that change again and it keeps my body complete on its toes and it doesn't get that time to sort of get used to those uh, routines but then there's also the other factors of the way you train i.e are you going to do more compound exercises are you going to do more isolation exercises are you going to alter your weight are you going to alter your rep range it's entirely down to yourselves but the key principles are the biomechanics of the exercise um how you do it it's about um it's it's about how you um manage to sort of adapt that form into the exercise and how you can actually use the muscles and keep them engaged correctly with the motion um, of the exercise. So for example, you work around the pivots, you find if you're gonna do a back exercise, like a lat pull down, you know, we don't wanna be using our arms. If we're training a back exercise and that muscle group, we need to make sure that at the end of it, we are actually engaging just that lateral dorsi. We're not training the, the biceps, the brachialis, the triceps. We need to 
you know, isolate it and take out all those surrounding muscle areas. So the way we do that is we look simply. A lot of machines have got a little red picture. They've got a little, a little guy there, a little muscular guy, and it shows in red the areas worked. Right, okay. Well, we want to just work that one area. So what we do is look at the principles of the exercise. You know, we think about, well, what adjusts the back? You know, where's the back connected? Well, we're looking at the shoulder. So the shoulder goes up and down, and that alters um, the, the tension with the lateral dorsi. So lateral dorsi and the rhomboid there and the trap, you know, which also runs into centre um, between your scapula, uh, your shoulder blades. So all those are connecting back muscles. So that's the areas we're trying to target. So use the biomechanics um, of that and you, you work around your exercises that way. So that's another point, you know, a, a thing you can change. You can look at the principles in how you train your exercises and what you're trying to get out of it and what you're trying to accomplish. Are you looking for an overall mass? Are you looking for, you know, the condition, the depth of the muscle? Are you looking at the angle of the muscle? Because don't forget, when we train a muscle, we don't just train at one angle because a muscle's fibers don't run in one direction. They crisscross, they run different ways. Okay, so we've got to remember that as well. So we always hit different angles, alter the exercise very slightly. Um, so yeah, guys, that's what I said, you know, end of the day, I don't um, necessarily train uh, set routines and so on. I, I tend to go off feel and look and, and all that kind of thing. But so I hope that answered your questions. Um, I hope that's uh, what you wanted to hear. And I hope I answered you there, you know, and you, you got the result you wanted. Um, don't forget, guys, any more questions, let me know. Um, you can get in touch with me on Instagram. Um, if you put into Instagram, it's Matt Bowd. That's Matt, B-O-W-D, underscore official. Uh, you can follow me on YouTube. It's Train2B. That's Train, T-R-A-I-N, number two, B-E. Um, and uh, there's a, a fitness channel there and you can look up look me up on there Facebook as well check me up it's M Bowd uh, have a look on Facebook you can see all the things that I'm up to on there Tr gyms I've trained at um, where I'm at see if we can hook up you know catch up and watch me do a session um, I'm always happy to help you out guys you know no matter what whether it's nutrition or anything or daily lifestyle whatever it be um, I've been in the industry for 13 14 years and uh, like I said, British champion and all the rest of it. Um, but for me, it's about being inspired to inspire others. Okay, it's about helping you guys. So um, don't forget, guys, check me up and follow us. And uh, good luck.